Today I have Sirisha with me. Today we want to talk about culture debt. So what exactly is culture debt all about? So culture debt is the shortcuts that you take today and is going to have a longer term impact on the organization's culture. Shortcuts in terms of the decisions that you make today, anything to do with your people which will have a subsequent impact on your culture. So I'll try explaining this by drawing a parallel to uh, technical debt, which is a more commonly used uh, term, right? So technical debt is basically a decision or a shortcut that you take today in terms of increasing the rate at which you will build your system, right? It could be uh, saving up on time, cost, or quality. It's a conscious decision you're making to get the product out and uh, run. Because of that, subsequently, a lot of other impact could happen. And you know that these are problems in the system we built today and we'll fix it later. Right. And like that, for culture debt is where today I'm taking some people decisions. I'm taking some decisions in the organization about how we will communicate, about how we'll hire people, what kind of person you're hiring today. Some of those decisions, which today for you are short term focus. You have a position to fill and it's a critical position. So you go ahead and fill that position. But what is that going to mean in the longer run is the debt that you're incurring. And unlike Technical debt, which is a conscious decision that the architect is making. Culture debt is where ramifications of it are what you will not be able to easily estimate. It also comes from the fact that usually in the founding team, you will have somebody who understands technology, will be the CTO. So they know the technical debt that they are incurring. They can visualize what it is going to lead to. They know the point of no return and they fix it before that. Typically, founding team will not have someone who can do the same thing for culture unless they have a serial founder, somebody who's been there, done that, second time entrepreneur because they've actually gone through the life cycle of one startup. So they probably are in a better position to understand culture debt than the first time founder. So what exactly is the price that companies will end up paying when it comes to culture debt? The ramifications, Harish, are, are very tough for anybody to estimate. For serial founders, they know that a decision like this today, two years later, this is how it's going to come back and bite you. But even then, the extent of damage is very unpredictable. I'll give you an example of a recent conversation I was having with a founder. Three years back, you know, this founder has got somebody on board who was fantastic from the skill set point of view for that particular role but was complete mismatch for the organization. Please, like this real aggressive, get this done as of yesterday person, while the organization was more uh, driven by humility, not that aggressive, high on empathy and things like that. That was a conscious decision. And he, this founder says, yeah, I always knew that I had to fix that problem, but I assume that constantly working with me and my other co-founders and the leadership team over a period of time, this person will build that capability because we mimic behavior right so he said looking at all of us this person is going to change he knew it never really acted on it now three years down the line the situation in the organization is where he has the organization divided into two there are few people who are like him who behave like him and who are very not really all nothing to do about the skill right they deliver what they have to deliver but behavior wise the culture he says the culture has become so toxic there are a group of people who are just suffocating in this environment. And there's another group of people who are uh, creating that divide. Now, that is a culture debt that he didn't assume. He always thought it is one person. It is localized and he needs to fix that. But look at the ramification of it. Now, whenever he's trying to hire uh, people in the middle and the senior management roles, people already know about this outside in the industry. So he says, I'm at a point where it is tough for me to return. I have a feeling that maybe... I have to go back three steps if I fire this person because I know within 30 other people will leave from the organization. But maybe that's a better option for me today before I start building the organization again because otherwise I cannot solve this problem. He says on an average, if I'm spending 50% of my time managing this conflict in the organization, then that's not the founder's time well spent, right? He says I would rather focus on the product. So one thing that, that comes to mind is also the fact that a lot of leaders, founders, CEOs, assume that culture will be built organically. Let these people come in and you know they will figure it out. They will get assimilated into our culture and, and we'll do this. I think that lack of being deliberate about the culture that you want to 
build what you want to really stand for that can also be a big factor as i see into incurring more and more of this culture right so what can founders really do to make sure that uh, this doesn't become too much of a to- toxic thing for them right? how do they get out of this trap of culture debt so bang on what you said harish it is about assuming that culture gets built okay now is how people behave when nobody is watching right it's the natural behavior within that company then that's again the difference probably that we find between founders and serial founders right where uh, serial founders know that it has to be a deliberate effort typically people assume that culture will get built we behave in the way we want everybody else to behave people will look at us and emulate but uh, it's human mind we're all conditioned now this person let's say in the previous example this person has thrived in an organization where aggression was the culture the individual won't know that anything is wrong so how do they adapt and that's where it all boils down to every company defining what is important for them what is the kind of culture that they want to build what works in the company what doesn't work in that company once you define that you have a baseline then every decision you make is a conscious decision because you know where you're deviating without actually having a baseline of what is the kind of culture that i want in my company and where then you won't know when you're deviating so you're hiring someone who you know think don't doesn't fit well but there's no way that you're going to track it because you don't know what is the extent of deviation let's say a company has four values and three out of four values know that this person doesn't fit then that's a very strong conscious decision you're taking at that point right so defining the baseline defining the culture manifesto and the culture handbook for a company will actually help them know when they are deviating and you can never operate with zero culture debt at all points right. founders have to take those decisions take make those decisions because sometimes time is critical sometimes the focus is always going to sh- drift from short term to long term to short term again right that shift in focus is going to happen but whatever decisions they're making it has to be deliberate so in a technical debt because what is your ideal perfect code what is a perfect system should look like what is the deviation you're taking from that um, ideal system or ideal architecture that you want to build like that when an organization defines what is the culture manifesto what are the values of the company how will people behave here on a day to day basis when they define that they know what is the deviation then they know what is the extent to which you're moving out and constantly evaluating or taking a checkpoint on where we are versus where we actually want it to be will help them correct this culture debt before it becomes a point of no return yeah yeah uh, the key message here sirisha that i am taking uh, is that there is going to be culture debt but like technical debt be wary of the point of no return on culture debt and that is going to come from knowing what your baseline is not knowing your baseline means that you have no idea what is the amount of culture debt that you have already incurred and like how all the fintech companies keep exhorting us to buy now pay later this sounds like wing it now and become toxic later you definitely don't want to be like that so on that note thanks a lot sirisha for this